Sonia with Artsy Solutions and I want to make some little ephemera, some like bugs and bees and things like that. And I ordered some um, some bee stamps from PM Artist Studio. So I want to try them out. Um, let's see. And I also got, um, oh they sent me like a little, a free little stencil and some little samples of some artwork that they've done uh, of papers. I, th I think it's jelly plated or something. These are very cute. I appreciate that. This, this is so nice. So, um, let me go ahead and uh, let me show you what they look like. It's a three piece set and there's different bees. You have like a wasp, a bumblebee, and um, what's the other one? The wasp, the bumblebee, and the honeybee. Yeah. And they're very cute. So let's have some fun and play with it. So I'm going to stamp, and I'm going to use some different mediums. I'm going to use some jet black archival ink by Ranger, and I'm going to try it with some Stazel and Timber Brown. And then I'm going to go back over the stamp some of the stamped images with some of this uh, Tim Holtz distress micro distress glaze and then I'm going to emboss some of them to make it pop but I'm gonna first try the um, I guess I'll start with the jet black and like I said I'm gonna stamp on some uh, I have some craft card stock 110 pound heavyweight card stock and then I have some heavyweight um, white card stock so let's start with the uh, craft card stock and I'm just going to ink my stamp and there may be a proper way to do it so I don't know I'm just going to do it like that and I'm just going to stamp with different things and see what we come up with and you can use these on jelly plates because um, PM Art Studio, they do a lot of their artwork on um, on jelly plates, but this looks really good right here. It comes out really well. So let me try this other one, and I like this one, the cardstock too, that brown cardstock, because I like that color. So let me um, let me try to ink it up really well. And I'm using archival ink. I'm just seeing how these turn out. Oh yes, look at that. I'm very impressed with these imprints. These are very good. And then let's try this third one. Look at that. These are not very well and they're very detailed. So um, while they're still damp, um, let me see. I don't know if it's a good idea of me to do it like this or not. But I'm just going to take a little bit of this, um, what do you call it? Distress, micro distress glaze. I'm just going to kind of go over it a little bit because my goal is to um, to have it pick up more um, embossing powder. So let me see if I can line it up. It may end up being like a shadow image, but that's fine. Yeah, it will be a shadow image, but that's fine. And I'm gonna do these other ones the same way.
Okay, so now we're going to add some um, this detail embossing powder. Let me get a plain piece of paper right quick. Just some copy paper or something. That's what I had close by. So I'll put this on top and we're going to emboss it. Just going to make sure I cover it up really well. Make sure it picks up. And we're going to emboss it. And I love it. I really, really love it because I can still cut it out and make it still look like the bees or whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to wipe these off. So I'm just going to take a cold, damp rag and we're going to wipe it off. I only put just a little bit of that distress uh, micro glaze on here because I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to ruin the stamps. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to try it out anyway because the micro glaze kind of makes it stand out a little bit better. And it makes the, um, the portion of what I wanted embossed pick up better. So. I could have stamped it and then just rubbed it across the whole thing, but I didn't want the whole image to get embossed. I only wanted specifically just the shape of the um, images, so that's why I did it like that. Okay, so now let's try some of this stays on brown, and we're going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to put this in fast forward mode, and we're just going to go through some of these different mediums of stamping.
them all out. And here's what some of them look like. Let me just kind of separate it so you can kind of get a general idea of what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, let me just kind of turn them right side up so you can kind of get an idea. So we got different color ones, different. We have a wasp, honeybee, bumblebee, you know, so different colors. And I like how the embossing kind of made the colors pop a little bit more so you could see it really well. Okay, so like I said, we're going to make something with it. So let me just set these over to the side. And I think I'm just going to make just a simple, um, what do you call it, loaded pocket. <laughs> That's something pretty easy. So I think I'm going to use some book pages and some scraps. So let me get just that. So I wanted to just use scraps instead of creating more scraps. And I didn't feel like digging through to find some scrap book pages. So I did find some scraps though. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to do is um, I have some leftover. Um, this was like the pull off from another project. And these are some butterflies. These came from the uh, PM Artist uh, Studios. Some of their stencils. Their butterfly stencils. So I figured why not just use these as a background. And um, so I want to make like a, like I said, a top loading pocket. And I have a piece of cardstock. Um, actually, it's kind of it's chipboard, so it's pretty thick. But I'm going to trim it down just a little bit because I want it to be able to fit a journal page. And right now it's bigger than a journal page. So, and a journal page is what, five and a half by eight and a half? So we're going to turn it down to eight by four and a half. So let me get my paper trimmer. Let's see. So actually, I think I'm going to make it seven and a half. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I want to make sure it fits on the page really well. So, um, four and a half. I'll just do four and a quarter, actually, yeah. So I like to make sure that there's plenty of room on there. So, okay, and then we're going to need some pockets that are like four and a quarter by... I guess I can make them about two inches, two by four and a quarter. So let me just get it. I'll just use this gray as a base. So four and a quarter. By two. Because we want to stack them. Let's look and see what that's going to look like when we put them on here. Okay, yeah, that'll work. That's all right. So we'll have three of them. Okay, so we want to create like a collage, like a backdrop. Um, Actually, I think I'm going to Mod Podge. I don't know what it would look like if I did Mod Podge these on there. Yeah, let's let's Mod Podge these. Some of this um, this butterfly onto this gray. So I'm going to use. Um, I guess I'll use the Mod Podge. <laughs> I hadn't planned on getting too messy, but sometimes you do what you gotta do, you know. <laughs> throw that away. Alright, so I'm just gonna add some Mod Podge on all three of these. You can use a different size brush, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this smaller brush. It's a whole lot easier to deal with. 
And I apologize for the sound of the sirens in the background. I live on a busy street, so we hear that every day. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get this Mod Podge on here, and then I'm just going to apply the um, the picture of the butterflies on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up. about one inch of, or a quarter of an inch apart from each other. Now I'm just going to line this picture and make sure the picture is centered in the middle of it or kind of in the middle of it and then it's just going to pick up the image hopefully if that's the goal <laughs> I'm just going to brush this over top. And I think I used alcohol ink on the image when I, I was using a stencil and that's how it, um, the image got on it mainly it was from the stencil, but the ink was alcohol ink. I think that's, I think that's what it was. Okay, so that should be on there pretty good. Oh, well, guess I better let that dry. Yeah. So, um... Let me clean this mess up and dry it right quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's on there, so I'm going to cut it loose, meaning I'm just going to cut around the edges. And then can either I'm just gonna cut around the edge. I was gonna fold it down and under, but I'm not gonna go through all that. I'm just gonna cut around the edge where it meets the paper, the two papers merge together. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of put the image together. I'm not even really sure how it goes. It kind of goes. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's it's a butterfly. So, <laughs> and it's just going to go on here like so. And so now I need to cut, uh, take a circle punch. There's this little two inch circle punch and I'm gonna try to cut like a little hole, just a small hole, if it'll do it. So this is some thick paper. Let me try. It might work, it might not. It left an imprint, so it almost got it. I'm gonna try this one. It's a little bit deeper, but it'd be alright. These are almost the same size. I might make this one just a hair deeper, just a tad bit. Since the other ones are deeper. And then I'll just cut around it, the part that didn't cut. 
All right. So we've got that. And um, we need some type of backdrop on this because this is kind of plain. Um, wonder. Well, maybe not. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just going to take some stays on and kind of go around the edges. Because that's the backdrop. And then um, I'm actually going to take some green peeled paint. I'm going to distress around the edges of this. It's pretty bright. I'm going to take my fingers and kind of blend the rest of it in. Do the same on this because it doesn't really need a whole lot. That Mod Podge, the paint kind of settles on top of the Mod Podge. But I like how the alcohol ink still shows through. And this is going to be like a springy kind of look. Sort of, kind of. gonna be pretty simple and I might put like a little title right there or something I'm not gonna overdo it um, but I do think it needs some brown going around the edge satisfied with that now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna spread a little bit of that on here. And then we're just gonna glue this on and then I might even stitch it. But I'm gonna definitely go ahead and glue it on first. I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue and glue these on and I'll be right back. Okay so I have it stitched on here. Um so I'm probably um this is going to get added to something inside of the journal, but um, I want to keep it pretty simple. So, um, so we've got our pockets, and I'm just going to put one of these little uh, bees on there, and I think I'm gonna go with the. Let's see what color is this? They have brown and black. I think the black one will probably do better than the brown. Um, I don't know, let me see, let me look at the, let me look at the brown, let's see what it looks like. I don't know, this brown looks pretty good compared to, well, let's see what the yellows would look like. They're pretty bright, but um, I'm going to go with, uh, hold on, <laughs> look at the greens. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with the browns or I'll do the blacks, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the black, I think. Um, it's so hard for me to make decisions. No, I think I'll do brown. I think the brown will do better because, of, yeah. We're going to do the browns <laughs> and call it a day. Okay, so... I'm going to put this one in the middle because it's kind of thicker. Whereas the other ones aren't quite as thick. So yeah, I'm going to use these bees. And I think I need something like white up underneath it. Like maybe, I've got some tool. Let me cut some little pieces off just to kind of see 
what it looks like. can't really see that too well. Let me get another piece of fabric. And I've got like a little piece of silk. We're going to see what that looks like along with the tool. And um, we'll see what that looks like. If I can tear it, it's kind of hard to rip <laughs> this with the tool. I think I like that, yeah. I think I'll, I think I like that. I'm just gonna glue those together. Let me get a little small piece of that tool fabric. I never have a plan when I'm crafting. I just kind of go with the flow and see what happens. <laughs> so. This wasn't planned out. So. <laughs> Let's see what this looks like. I don't know if it's too big or I don't know. We'll see. I may even have to add something else to it. I want to see the tool against the brown because to me, when you when you see contrasting colors, they work better. Let me turn it like that so it can kind of hang. Let me see. And then I'll get one more piece of the silk. And we're just going to glue it on. Yeah, I think that's going to look kind of cute. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Let me just get the glue. I think I'm going to use the glue stick. and Because I was pretty impressed with it before using it on another project. And it seemed to stick... Fabric seemed to stick to it pretty well. So I'm going to give it a try again and see if it will still stick. So far so good. And I like how it doesn't really bleed through the way the like other liquid glue does, you know, so. Okay, so now we have that, and I feel like it needs something else. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle little bits and pieces of this coffee that I have in here. I don't know if that's helping it or making it worse. It's probably making it worse. <laughs> And then I'm going to get some um, some alcohol sprays and just kind of just sprinkle some stuff on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray a little bit of this spray onto the surface. Oh, I got the wrong color. I should have got blue. Let me just wipe that up. This is uh, Bakers and Crafters Blue Alcohol Ink. 
It's from um, the Sweets by Felicia. So I'm going to use them. I'm going to use some of this black acrylic paint. Which I didn't need that much. I wish I hadn't <laughs> poured that much. And then I'm just going to use just a little bit of white. And what I may do is just take make some pages with this leftover ink and paint that's going to be on here. I don't want to put too much. Oh, that's good enough. Okay, so for the black, um, I'm just going to water it down. I'm just going to put just a few little speckles on there, not too many. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Just need to water it down and just kind of get some spatters on there. To me, the spatters kind of bring out your project. That's just my opinion. It's, I guess because I like spatters. <laughs> Not too, too many, but just enough to kind of give it a look. And then we're going to add this white. And the white's mainly to show up on the brown, but it's it offers a contrast in color. I like that. I like how it pulls everything together, you know. I'm gonna get a bigger brush for the white. Okay, I think I'm satisfied. That's good enough. So we have our little sprinkles. And that's pretty much it for today. And I'm just going to, after that dries, I'm just going to add some of these in here. I've got some, um, I actually have some little pieces of ephemera that I'm going to stick down in here. But um, that's pretty much it. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and my blog and my social media sites. And um, so I hope you guys like this and thanks for watching.